Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
<clears throat> say thank you to you guys for giving me this uh, opportunity to um, to testify. And uh, you know, we've um, the eight years of my life playing cricket. Uh, we never had people who really listened to our cries. And um, I'll, I'll now and then mix Tosa in English. Um, I started, I'm just going to give you a brief background about Ulunaba um, Tutsobe. Uh, I come from Imataiki. I uh, started playing cricket in um, Imataiki. I was a young boy, and I think I started uh, taking cricket seriously when I was uh, 12, 13 years old. And um, yeah, so it, it, <clears throat> I come from a sports orientated family, you know. Uh, my dad used to play rugby, mom was in the in the board for the for the uh, they say rugby um, my sister was the captain for the Springboks women brother plays rugby and I decided to play cricket the reason why I decided to play cricket because the people the older guys that we grew up with they always forced us to play well not forced us but it was a game that was played regularly instructing so that's how I was taken to play cricket, you know, because uh, we had uh, the likes of Abu Tatumbata, Abu Abu Munabi Sikanjo, guys who actually wanted us to do something and not uh, and, and do wrong stuff, wrong things. So 2003, I joined the Lennon Cricket Academy, and um, I think that's where everything started, you know, uh, but at the time, we, we <clears throat> as a young kid, you never really see these kind of discriminations and um, uh, differences with, 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 your, with your colleagues, you know, because you're just happy to be playing what you love. So 2003, uh, uh, I joined the Lennon Cricket Academy in the Eastern Province. Uh, we stayed at the University of Port Elizabeth then, which is now uh, called NMU, and we stayed in um, in our toy Unitas. And you know, listening to all the guys speaking, it it it, it actually took me back to that 2003. That you know what? In fact, I actually asked the coach that was coaching us at that time, Obana. Who were the guys staying at the varsity? And to my surprise, it was only black people, you know. So it 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 it, it just it just uh, it just <clears throat> like I mentioned earlier on, it's it's not something that you wary of uh, because obviously the white guys are, are, are much more privileged to be staying at home, where we as black kids, our parents don't have the means for us to be going up and down. So we would rather be staying in a, in a, in a hostel, you know, and, and 2003, I did well for the, for the, for the, for the Lennon Cricket Academy. And um, I was selected to be in the, in the Eastern Province uh, BT. And then, um, Years go by, uh, with 2004, 2004 was called up for the for the Warriors to practice with them, uh, but not yet contracted, and and I practiced, practiced, and it was it was it, it was a good experience because you know, as a young kid who was aspiring to 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 be the next Makai Antini, you know, to be the next Alan Donald, you know, it's 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 for you to be playing Naband of that caliber in the same team or just being around them, you know, it, it means a lot, you know, because it just shows you whether you are very close to where you want to be. Uh, 2005, um, I was called up because I was performing um, in the B in the B team and the, 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 the Warriors, I was called up in the South African National Academy which I stayed at the at the HPC uh, in Pretoria High Performance Center, and I think we were about a squad of twenty players. And um, <clears throat> there, I wasn't selected to go to 
in Pakistan because of whatever reasons that I may not know as well. 2006, contracted with the Warriors. Um, then that's when I started noticing that, you know what, this discrimination thing is actually happening. Um, firstly, we had um, a language problem, you know, where us as black players in the changing rooms, I can't talk this course with my counterpart or my colleague, which was at the time, was Netembab Jegula. You know, we will always be crucified for talking is Kosa with, with someone that you relate to, you know. And my question was to them, but guys, when you guys speak Afrikaans to your counterparts, no one says anything. Because obviously, if I'm addressing you guys, I would not be talking Kosa, I'll speak English. But now I'm talking to someone who I relate to in my own home language. Why? But it was a it was a huge conflict, and then I ended up just leaving it, you know, because obviously I wanted to. I didn't want to be seen as a person that um, is too uh, talkative, so I just left it. And then the other thing that I noticed was, you know, when we traveled to go to Joburg. Um, we would have three or four separate buses. We would have a bus for black people. We would have a bus for white people. We would have a bus for management. And it's something that happens, I think still today, it still happens that black people travel alone, white people travel alone. You know, I didn't say anything about it. I, I, I just kept quiet. You know, because I, it's it's. I'm in the beginning of my career. I don't want to burn my bridges, so I was like, you know what? Let me just leave it. When we get to the hotels, it's it's <laughs> it's it's so it's it's it just happens that each and every time when I have to share a room, I'll share a room with a black person. There was not a day where I shared a room with a white person. But it, it was one of those things where you, you just let it slide. You, 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 you just move on, you know, because you don't want to be distracted. And then still 2006, we were playing a game at um, St. George's, you know, where um, I think it was a semi-final or a final, or it was just one of the games where I was going downstairs to take the, the field we were filling. And then when I look on my left to see whether my mom is there, you know, I actually saw her sitting down there by herself. And then I quickly ran to her and asked her, listen, wh why are you sitting here? And she was like, no, no, no. I went upstairs to the family's, um, to the family's suite. And one of the ladies told me that it's full. So I said to her, no, man, it can't be. And then I went, I went to Lee Dazel, asked Lee, Lee, why is my mom sitting down there, you know, uh, and there's still space upstairs? And then she didn't, she didn't have an answer for me. So I quickly ran to, to the coach and said, coach, listen, uh, what's going on? My mom is sitting there. If my mom is not sitting in the suite, I'm not taking on the field, you know, uh, because why is it that all the parents and the wives and the girlfriends of the players, they're sitting in the suite, but my mom, is it because of color or anything? But that that was sorted. So those, I'm just gonna quickly, I'm not gonna run through the instances that happened. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly mention them just before I get to, to the main, main uh, batch fixing part. Um, 2007, um, got selected. Uh, uh, sorry, um, Ronald. <clears throat> First of all, don't feel rushed that you have to get to the end. Um, you must take your time because this is a moment that you didn't get before and you may not get year after. If you don't finish, let's put it this way bluntly. If you don't finish today, you haven't finished today. 
So okay. pace yourself because I am sure everyone who's listening and viewing what you are saying, like I am doing, is processing the entirety of what you are saying. And mm -hmm. some of us are writing down some of the things that you are saying as notes because at the end of the day, we must make sense of what you have been saying. So don't feel rushed. Um, I will defend <laughs> uh, your having testified at your own pace. And there is nothing that is unimportant. Don't censor yourself and say, ah, look, maybe I'm being petty. Because if I may say so, our brief here is to see whether one there was any gender and or racial discrimination in the sporting uh, code called cricket for the last 30 years from 1991 to 2021. And, uh, and see in what ways discrimination was unfair, whether it was on the basis of race or gender, and then make our findings known to the board or to whoever else is interested in knowing what this whole exercise is all about. So please, don't rush yourself and uh, don't censor yourself by saying, hey, look, maybe, you know, uh, that panel is going to think that what I'm saying is, is unimportant. Nothing is unimportant. This is a serious matter, and we are taking a very serious view of it. That's why we go even through the ritual of having to ask you whether you are prepared to, whether what you are going to say is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else but the truth. So please, relax. Okay. I, um, I thank you for that, uh, Chair. Uh, it's because, you know, I've always been listening to all the other um, uh, testimonies and you would always say that uh, time is, is, the, is the devil of all of us. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> do not, you know, um, sacrifice substance, you know, uh, on the altar of... of, of, of you know, of time. There was once uh, an advocate who, who represented us in some matter, and whenever the judge said, Mr. So-and-so, when are you going to finish? And he would say, the advocate would say, I have not come here to finish a case. I've come to defend one. So, <laughs> so, so, so please, <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, so um, 2007, um, I was selected uh, by Cricket South Africa uh, as a domestic newcomer of the year. And um, 2008, um, I was nominated as the sportsman of the year in the um, Eastern Cape uh, Premier Sports uh, Recreation. Uh, fortunately enough, uh, because of my performances in the franchise season, uh, I was called up for the Proteas to tour uh, Australia, which is the same year, 2008. Um, I was told that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being selected to, to go gain some experience and to be amongst the great. And, you know, for, for me, that's, that's a huge achievement, you know, and... Um, I couldn't take it lightly, you know, um, traveling with Abu Makaya, with Abu, with, with the big names, you know. Um, on the on the 11th of uh, January, I was I remember sitting in Romania with Abu Makaya, and um, he said to me that he needs to go home because there's uh, some of his relatives had an accident or something like that. So he had to rush back from Australia to East London. So on the 11th of, um, of Jan, um, 
2009, uh, it was, um, I made my first T20 debut uh, in Melbourne. And then um, obviously I was, it, it was one of those where, geez, I've, I finally made it, you know, I've got a cap, I've got a CSA uh, Cricket South Africa cap, you know. Uh, and then um, on the 30th of Jan, 2009 still, um, I made my one day international debut against Australia in Perth. And um, which we won, I think we won by 39 runs. And, and to be quite honest, I, I did quite well. I got four wickets for um, four wickets for 50 runs. And I was proud of myself, you know, because I'm, I'm in this big stage where I'm the only black person in the team, you know, uh, despite all the hurdles that I went through. And same year after coming back from Australia, um, I was uh, selected to be in the ICC Champions Trophy, uh, which was held in South Africa uh, from the 24th of September to uh, the 5th of October. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it was one of those where you're told that you're being put in the team just to fill the numbers or the targets that we need to reach because I never played a game of which in some way I could, I could understand that there's a lot of good players that are within the squad. But if you're talking about experience, if you're talking about uh, um, opportunities, why not give me dead rubber games? Of which dead rubber games are games where you know that you're qualifying to go to the semifinals. You know, let's play Lonrobo so that he can get some kind of experience. Doesn't matter if it's a big team or a small team. So we went on to um, 2010. Um, I was nominated again as a, a sportsman of the year in the Eastern Cape. And um, I was chosen the same year as a sports star of the year in the Eastern Cape. Um, what came to my surprise was the fact that the same 2010, there was a T20 World Cup in the West Indies, of which I never made the team for that. But I made the team for the ICC uh, trophy. Um, I think the World Cup, I stand to be corrected, it was on the 30th of, it would start on the 30th of April till the 16th of May. And that went past, um, we lost, uh, guys came back and he, South Africa had a tour, the Proteus side had a tour to, to go to West Indies just after coming back from the World Cup. And <laughs> to my surprise, I was selected to be in the team going to West Indies. So it kind of like put questions in my head that if I didn't go play in the World Cup, and then why take me with to West Indies? But um, I was I was I was always chuffed to be in the team. Um, so. Um, I never questioned that. I just uh, let it be, you know. And then um, the same 2010, I went back to my franchise. I was playing for the Chevrolet Warriors. On the 12th of March, uh, we won the Standard Bank uh, Pro 20 final, which was in uh, Port Elizabeth against the Lions, and we won by 82 runs. I'm just singling out these things so that you can, you can you can see the, 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 the experience that I'm getting with all the, the, the teams that I'm playing for, you know, uh, for me to talk about what I'm going to talk about later in terms of being, uh, not being given a, 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 a opportunity to play because of a lack of experience, you know, and then, um, 2010 again, we won the 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 the, the, um, the MTN 40, 
which was on the 27th of uh, Jan, uh, which was in East London. 2011 went to um, Essex, played for Essex, and and I think ooh, 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 that Omar Henry mentioned that, you know, first time going to England, different environment, wet conditions, where you come from South Africa where it's, it's warm, and you get there, the team welcomes you, like the management and the CEO, they welcome you in a, in a warm manner. But what I found out was I, was, I was left alone, I was in the dark, you know, because I think some of the senior players felt like this guy is a professional player, he's yet to take our spot. So I, I was, I, I, I sent it, I, I wrote a tweet that it's the most um, uncomfortable three, uh, three months that I've ever had in my life. And then I was sent, I was sent back to South Africa for that. I, could, I literally had no one to talk to, you know, because most of the guys would be doing their own thing. They would be uh, talking in clicks, whereas I would be the international player sitting there minding my own business, go play, come back, sit there, get in the car, go to the room, go to my um, apartment. And I get, I got a lot of slack for that, um, of which um, I spoke to uh, then the CEO, Gerald Majola, to say that uh, time, I always call it time out that um, this is what's happening, you know, uh, what do you advise me to do? The first thing that he said to me, if you don't feel comfortable, come back home, you know, so I, I actually did that. CSA Awards, when I came back home, um, I was chosen as the Standard Bank International Pro 20 Cricketer of the Year. And um, the 10th World Cup, the same year, 2011, 10th World Cup in India, Sri Lanka, and for the first time it was held in Bangladesh. Um, I did not play all the group games, you know, and I was given I was given a game in Bangladesh to uh, to play. Now, playing in Bangladesh is, is 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 it's something else. You can't literally hear the person next to you because it's so loud, you know. And and, and I was I was I was feeling a bit. Uh, I'm playing a big stage. A lot of people are watching. I felt like you know. I, I need to do well here. Fortunately, three wickets, 14 runs, man of the match. And, uh, you know, I, 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 the, the, the one person that I'll call when I've done well or when I've done badly is I'll call my mom. You know, mom, this is what happened. I was so frustrated. I was scared. I was this, I was this, I was that, you know. And, Surprisingly enough, with the match the winning performance, there was a quarterfinal um, against New Zealand. Same pitch, same field in Bangladesh, but a different team. I was never selected to play. Even though you were taking three wickets in 14 runs, Yes, that was straight after the game that I played uh, against Bangladesh. So yes. I think it was two days or three days after they selected a team to play in the quarterfinals against New Zealand. I mean, that's so, an average of like four, <laughs> I mean, one wicket per four runs. Yes. So... <laughs> Just out of curiosity, you know, not questioning the the, the, the the selection, I went to the coach. I said to the coach, coach, why wasn't I chosen to play? The answer that I got was, we needed players with experience. Experience in what? We needed players in experience. At, at, in what? I don't know. Because you, you gain experience because you are played. And if you never get 
game time, then you will never acquire experience. I mean, it's, it looks to me like it's, a, it's that kind of chick, is it an egg or a chicken? Which comes first? Yes. And, 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 and that's the reason why I mentioned all the things that I mentioned in the past that I played in semifinals, I played in finals, and I still mm -hmm. won. I was in the winning team. So that's some kind of experience as well, you know? So what more do they want for me to do to gain experience? If I'm traveling with the team, what experience am I getting to carry bags? than not to leave me within the Warriors, play and get more experience. You understand? So yeah. that's that. Um, and, and, and funny enough, when we lost that quarterfinal, um, the minister was there, uh, the CEO was there, and, and I went to them and I said to them, and what is it that I need to do? I understand that. I never wanted to be a black child, but it happened that I'm a black child. I'm not privileged, you know? What can, from your guy's side that you've been in the setup for long, what is it that I need to do to be constantly in the team? Minister Wu, at that time? Minister Fikile Mbalula, Mr. Okay. Mr. Fikile Mbalula was there. Mm. And, and <laughs> funny enough, you know, when, when we flew back, to South Africa. We, we came back without the captain. Now, as a team that went to go represent a country in a foreign country, the captain needs to come back and report to the media at the airport. The captain was not there. Where was yes, he? the captain went to Ireland to go propose. Mm. It, it was quite a big issue, but it was just swept under the carpet because obviously he did come publicly and apologized. You know, but I'm, 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 I'm just I'm just trying to show you the 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 the, the ways that things are swept under the carpet when it comes to certain players within the structures of Cricket South Africa. And, and um, the same year, um, I think um, the bowling coach asked me to, to bowl faster, you know, because my bowling um, average was 125 to 135. I said to him, Coach, I, I don't understand why you would want me to bowl faster because of being selected in the team, bowling the same way I've been bowling. Why now, when I'm in the setup, you would want to change my action? I'm not a person that jumps high, but I'll never be a Monet Morkel. I'll never be a Dale Stane, you know? And... But I, I just, do do the job because I get the wickets. That's the, that's the main point. You get selected to do a certain job. I did the job. You know? And he said, no, no, no. We need you to bowl faster. We need you. But I was like, you know what? Let me just do what they're asking me to do. And I got a side strain. I got a side strain that kept me out in the system for, I think, four or five weeks. And, and um, 20, 2012, um, I, um, 2012, I was ranked, um, I was ranked, no, no, no. no. 2012, I was ranked number one in the world in the ODIs because of my performances. You don't just get put into the number one position because you are black. You get put there because of your performances. Bearing in mind, I've only started from 2000, 
2008-2009 to be in the team, 2012, number one in the world. And I don't think there's a black African bowler who's actually been from South Africa, been number one in the world. And fortunately enough, um, I was selected uh, in, the, in the T20 World Cup to tour Sri Lanka on the 18th uh, of September till the, the 7th of October. And, and to be quite, to take accountability, you know, that year in T20, I did, I did well, but in that particular tour, I didn't do the way that I would have liked to done to do, you know. So it was always one of those where, when we come back, they'll always question Lonobo's fitness. They'll always say, "No, Lonobo is unfit. Lonobo is this. Lonobo is that." You know, I would be the scapegoat to, 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 to blame when the team does badly. And and. and I, you know, I never questioned it because at the end of the day, it seemed like when you start questioning things, you get sidelined, you know? And I didn't want that because I was feeding my family. I was looking after my family. Cricket was putting food on my table, you know? And I, 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 just, let, I just let it go. 2013, joined the Lions um, in Gauteng, and I was also included in the ICC uh, Champions uh, Trophy held in England and Wales uh, between the 6th of June and the 23rd of June. Um, again, um, on that tour, I didn't do as well as I would have expected to do as a number one bowler in the world. I was number one bowler in the world from Feb 2012 till May 2013. And I, 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 coming back from the tour, from the, from the World Cup, you know, we came back to South Africa, um, stayed a couple of days, went to go visit the family, you know, they were proud that I just came back, you know, and it was a good time. Went back to Joburg, I was forced, I was forced by our medical team to undergo a surgery, an ankle surgery. Now, the first question that I asked is, guys, I've had this injury since 2008. I've been playing with the same injury since 2008. Why only now? I should go for an operation. It's not affecting me. The only thing that I'll do is I'll strap my ankle, do whatever I need to do and play. After the game, I'll put my ankle in ice and I'm fine. Why is it that I need to undergo surgery? Now, they want me to go for surgery. I said to them, okay, you know what? I'll go for surgery. 2014 is another T20 World Cup. The reason why I asked them, why do I need to go for surgery? Because I wanted to go to the World Cup. And had I done the surgery, the doctor said to me, I will not be able to go to the World Cup if I do the surgery. So I went back to them and said, guys, the doctor says I can't go to the World Cup if I undergo surgery. And I went, I did the, I did the, um, I did the surgery. And by God's grace, you know, um, when, when the forces are against you, you know, you, you, you sometimes pull through. Did the, uh, the, 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 the surgery, I spoke to Jeff Toyana, who was the coach for the Lions at the time. I said to him, Jeff, you know, I will need your help here. 
I've done my surgery. I would want the Lions physio to try and assist me because I want to go to the World Cup. I did go attend their physio sessions, which was the recommended uh, physiotherapist by the, by the surgeon. So basically I did two sessions in one day. I would go to Gabi, who was the uh, physio for the Lions at the time. I would go to the CSA recommended um, um, physio. And, and I think a month, two or three months, I was starting to walk again. You know, there was improvement. And um, the World Cup was going to be held from the 16th of March till the 6th of April. Now, I was fine in 2013 November. No, somewhere, somewhere in uh, September. Somewhere September, I was fine. Jeff started working with me within the setup of the lion. So I started running, I started doing things, I started to do physical things just, just to test if the, the ankle is fine, you know? And he said to me, Lobs, first game we were gonna play in Poch, uh, MTN, um, MTN, was it MTN 40 at the time? First, uh, it was a momentum cap. First game we were, we were going to play in Poch, he said to me, Lobs, are you sure that you want to play? I said to him, Jeff, I think I'm fit. Let me play. You know, and I played. First game I come back to play, I got five wickets, man of the match. Mm. The second game we played, I got four wickets. Third game, Third game I played, I think I got four wickets again, and then I got two wickets after that. So in the middle of the season, in the middle of the momentum cap, which is five games, I was the leading wicket taker. I think I had 14, 15 or 16 uh, wickets at the time, you know, all the other bowlers were six, five, seven, somewhere there, you know. And to my surprise, they mentioned the T20 World Cup team. My name was not there. I called Dr. Musaji, who was the doctor of the team at the time and the manager. Called Doc, Doc, what's going on? Why am I not in the team? Hey, Schlops, can you please call um, your convener of selectors? Because I don't lie. I don't want to lie. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, okay, all right. I called, um, I called um, then the convener, uh, Andrew Hudson. Mr. Hudson, how are you doing? No, I'm all right, Schlops, how are you? I'm okay. Why am I not in the team for the T20 World Cup? His answer was, you haven't played enough games to be in the team. So I was, I was obviously, obviously that, that took, that took a, that took a huge chunk out of my out of my out of my confidence you know it killed my confidence and i don't know if you guys have a lt2 in front of you where it says totoba's world cup exclusion that most baffling of all selections yep. 
if if I may through you, Chair, can I just read the parts that broke my confidence? Yes. It says Abbott's figures read four for zero and six. 68 runs, one. And yeah, economy, it is. Um, is it? Um, I am at L2, L2. Yes. And then there's... Paragraph, paragraph one, two, three, four, five. On the following yes. page. Yes, on the following page, sir. The one that says scale to please <laughs> Gail okay, okay. Oh, Gail to play. Oh, yeah. It's almost in the middle. Okay. Mm. So it says um, Abbott figures read four, four overs, no maidens, 68 runs, one wicket. An economy rate of 17, the worst ever figures in a T20 international. Right? And obviously at the time, they were looking for five frontline bowlers for the World Cup. And mm. who was doing well in the franchise at the time? Lonoabo. But I was overlooked. And then it goes on to further say, Abbott, has done very little to prove that he is the man for the job. In eight ODIs for South Africa, Abbott has the third worst average, 54.2 of all time. His strike rate of 74.8 is also the third worst. But where are you reading it, Lonoam? I'm reading. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the seventh paragraph. In, uh, in where, where he says, in his eight. Oh, it's just that, you know, I don't know what happened here. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of redundant, redacted. I think, it's hi I, think, I think it's highlighted. Yeah, it looks like now it's redacted. <laughs> yes, I think I think it's highlighted because if you can see my copy... Okay, is, well, uh, just I'm read that the into the record. And uh, where it says, in so, his da-da-da ODIs for South Africa, then I can't yes. see anything. And then, and then the highlighted part, the one that you can't see, it says Abbott has the third worst average, 54.20 of all time, mm. right? And then the other part that's highlighted, it says his strike rate of 74.8 is also the third worst ever. Yes. And then he goes on to say, then the exclusion of Lonovo Totobe is baffling. So Tobe, so I'm reading the next paragraph now. So Tobe, who was the number one ranked ODI bowler once upon a time, has an ODI average of just 24.96, an economy rate of 4.74, and a strike rate of 31.5. He also has experience, and I, I highlighted experience yeah. for a reason. Because so that hope, you had not played not, enough matches I, to warrant. And I don't have experience. Yes. Now, I go on to highlight selectors weren't sure whether he had returned to match fitness. How are they not sure that I've returned to match fitness if I'm the leading wicket taker of a competition? And when you had gone into hospital and had come up and you had two physiotherapists to attend to your to your after surgery. But, yeah. Yes. So uh, these are just the things that 
break players. You know, these are the excuses that are always given to players of color for them to get an opportunity to play. You know, they'll always question you. No, your fitness. No, this, no, that. They'll always badmouth you. They'll always put you in a situation where you doubt yourself as a, as a black African or a black player. You know, and then, yeah, and then uh, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the um, gist of, of, um, of what I was talking about. And, you know, funny, funny enough, when I was listening to... Uh, uh, if, if, you could, if, if you could just bear with me. But this journalist goes on to say, in 2013, uh, the last paragraph on that page, so yeah. Sobe had a number of issues with his work ethic. He struggled with yes. his fitness and even failed a fitness test, but was included mm -hmm. in the Champions Trophy squad and the squad which toured Sri Lanka regardless. regardless. I'm, just, I'm just imagining that, you know, there might be somebody who says, ah, look, Lonobo is being selective even when he presents with you a, a newspaper article to push his point. He doesn't, however, take you to, um, to that very same article where uh, the journalist is um, remarking about, about his fitness. What do you make of that paragraph? Well, it... it because, last, I mean, it, go, it goes on, on to the second page. Tsotsobe's apathetic approach to his cricket showed during the Champions Trophy in the former, and then they go on to to, um, to, 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 to talk about your averaging 42,542, I mean 42,52, uh, with a rate of 5.63 and a strike rate of 45,00. So... So the discussions that I had with, with, with the coach is that you guys say my work ethic is poor, right? This is what I'm asking from you guys. I can stay in South Africa and work, but I would like to come with you to Australia, even if I don't play, but I want to be under your guys' watch to see my work ethic. You know, I had to ask them that. And I was taken to Sri Lanka. I was taken to Sri Lanka. I think we played, I stand to be corrected, I think we played five games, five ODIs. The first two ODIs we lost. Russell Domingo called me and said, Lobs, I want you to play. First game I played, I picked up three wickets, four wickets. First game, I, we ended up winning the series and beating uh, uh, Sri Lanka. Now, as an opening bowler, um, Che, just to give you an insight, as an opening bowler, you bowl amongst the top order batsmen, one, two, three, four. Yes. Those are most probably your best batters you can find. Your Jayawadeen, you know. For me to get wickets of such caliber, it just tells you something about a black guy. Mm. Or it tells you something about uh, the opening bowler, the skill that he's got, the experience that he's got, you know. So, so uh, we, we, when we came back, it was like, but Totobe did well for you guys. You were not meant to play Lonobo, but he ended up playing. And the remarks were, yes, he did well, but he still needs to work on his fitness. Now, yeah, uh, my, my, my reading of what the chairperson has read to you, yes, he sir. makes reference to the 2013. 
and we are talking about 2015. This article was about the game which was played in 2015, right? Or 2014? No, usually, usually, usually what happens, um, uh, Mr. July, is that um, sometimes when we go to 12, the article is straight after the 12. So it can be maybe in, in whatever um, month yeah. or year that we were in. So they always take it yes. to the following, Hear to the me. following year. How I understand the, the writer to be to what he intends to relay is the following. That okay. in 2013, you were not in good shape, but they took they took you with them anyway. Mm. So you did, but why don't they, why didn't they take you with them? When I was in good shape? Well, yes. Because okay. you were in good shape at the time yes. when they excluded you. So he's mm -hmm. drawing comparison. Yes. When they okay. took you yeah. to Sri Lanka, you were not in good shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just and it just raises eyebrows. What it, they can take me, not in good shape, and not take me whilst I'm in good shape. You know, are they taking me for the sake of reaching the targets within the squad, or are they taking me because I'm good enough to play? Yeah. So. Um, with that being said, um, it just brings me back to 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 what uh, Mr. Jordan um, his transfer, transformation uh, principles, where he says inclusion, opportunity, fairness, and performance. You know, um, not enough opportunities were given to me, but I still made it. I found my own ways to make it to the top. Fairness, there was no fairness. Performance, I performed. My, 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 my figures, even today, speak for themselves. If I, can, if I can go through my figures now, it test matches economy rate of three, average 49. Five games played, nine weekends. ODIs, Economy rate of 4.75, average 25, 61 games, 94 weekends. Now, the first black African who would have reached quicker to 100 wickets was going to be me. But my dream was taken away from me. Imran Tahir is probably the current guy who's holding the number one position if we're talking about black people. Now I'm talking black African. T20s, uh, economy of 6.9, average of 30, 23 games, 18 wickets. First class, which is your franchise, economy, 3.17, average of 26, 61 games, 201 wickets. Take those stats and give it to any coach you make the side. Now, going to um, going to going to the, the 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 the. I think I'll just I'll just go along. If you if you guys have any concerning questions that you would like to ask, uh, please feel free to to ask me. You know, which, which um, topic are you intending to cover now? I'm looking to to cover the the, the, the the flawed processes of the of the um, match fixing. Yeah. Before you go there, I thought you were going to you 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 counted instances of racial discrimination, but there's part in paragraph nine of your affidavit where you say when I was initially selected to represent the protests on tour, I had to carry the bags of senior players into the bus. At the time, 
I thought it was part of initiation extended to any new player in, that, in the team. To my astonishment, later on, when I became a senior player, none of the newly selected white squad members were subjected to the so-called initiation exercise. That is true. That is true. Um, the first time 2008 when I got to Australia, I had to take off my blazer and pack all the bags in the bus. The 2012-2013, some of the new players that came in the squad, we they would literally organize the citizens of the country that we're in, either to pack the bus in another another some sort of transport to follow us to the stadium and we as players we will just go in the bus and go straight to the hotel when we get to the hotel in the morning or in the afternoon we would get our bags next door next to our uh, hotel rooms and you just take your bag and put it in your room You also left out from your affidavit when you were narrating your racial experiences. The issue on paragraph 11, the Vernon Philander incident. Mm. Can we unfold it? 2011. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think going to that, um, there's, there's evidence of that in LT1. Yeah. Uh, Philander, Philander injured in practice. And, uh, do I have the whole All right. Um, the problem there, what I feel like was more, um, not say discriminating, but it was unfair, is the fact that the doc writes, Vernon suffered a mild strain to the medical collateral ligament of his left knee while he was bowling today. I'm just going to read what, what, what's written here. Yeah. Right now, we are still confident he will be fine for the test, which is test matches. The challenge would have been if it was more. He is somewhere between 85% to 90% fit suffering side strain. Now, in answering the question whether I would be given an opportunity to play, right? Mr. Musaji stated the following. Lopsy is much better, but we are building him slowly. That is uh, paragraph uh, 12 of my affidavit. The journalist concludes to say in the article, should Philander be unfit to bowl on Monday? Mm. An unkept Mashant Delanga would mostly likely make his debut. Now, does it not, is that not an opportunity missed to be in the test squad? Yes, I was not featured in the test series. And instead they put Mashan Delanga to play. My side, my side strain at that time was fine because I was still bowling in the net. So it's, it's, it's one of those opportunities that you miss. You don't know what you could have done in the game to be permanently, not even permanently, but to be consistently selected within the side. You know, it's, yeah, and, and 
And the other thing that I missed, um, you know, it, 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 was, it was just shocking, man, to see how the white players would have injuries, but they would go straight back into the setup where, for me, I had to go through to play franchise cricket first to prove myself that I'm fit. That's not right. Why is it that a white player is not going through the same thing that a black player is going through? You know? So it's, it's sometimes, sometimes you know that you can't fight the system alone. You know, you, you, once you start raising these things within the system, you get targeted. You get targeted. You become a target. We wrote a petition, I think 2015, saying that, I think Pangi spoke about it. The petition was that we were tired of us being used. We don't carry drinks. We are good enough to be playing. Why not field us? In their eyes, are we not good enough? We're just filling in the numbers just because the minister is saying we must fill the numbers? So there's just a lot of questions that we had. Well, I had personally because, you know, I, I, I like looking deeper into things. Now, um, going to the to the match fixing scandal, which is uh, I think page six, uh, paragraph eighteen. You go to the match fixing scandal. I just want to get your view on, you know, um, how the task team, you know, that was addressing the concerns that you raised in the in the petition. Um, you know, you know, what was your view on how, you know, the, the queries raised or the concerns raised in that petition? Um, what is your view on how that was handled? Um, <laughs> till today, we haven't had an answer. I heard Mr. Arensa saying um, they answered us. I still remember the meeting. Some of the guys went to the airport to go meet with them, but they never came with an answer. Nothing was done. Yes, there's a lot of black players playing in the in the in the current Proteus side. But it 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 when I write something to you, you need to respond, you know, so that we see change. Hence, some of the players are even concerned that is this thing gonna gonna go anywhere. You know, and I fully understand what uh, the chair always tells the guys. What you guys, we've got faith, guys. We we are not doing this just because we, it's it's another lip service. You know, we we believe that this is going to be our recommendations are going to be listened to. So with. Answering you, um, uh, Ms. Nele, nothing was done. Yeah. Before we go to the next topic, I just want to stretch my legs a little bit. Can we take a, a break of five minutes? Five, just five. Five minutes? Yes. So that's um, half past three? Yes. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bus now. It's got a bus three. So uh, let's come back at 20 past. 20 past, okay. Yeah.
Lenovo, I just have to remind you that you are still under oath. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, Mr. July. No, we can proceed now. You are going to your next topic, which is the match fixing scandal. All right. <clears throat> Um, th this topic is, is probably um, one topic that's uh, very touching and complex. Um, I was charged with e allegations <clears throat> on, I think, on the 24th of April, 2017. Um, and... Um, I think I was charged with, um, according to, according to what I wrote on my affidavit, uh, <clears throat> I was charged with 26 counts of breaches uh, in the uh, anti-corruption uh, code. Um, and I think uh, on paragraph 19, do you guys have the charges in front of you? I don't have to go through them. That's yes. fine. Yes. Right. <clears throat> um, I think the, the, the one of the reasons, one of the reasons why <clears throat> um, it's 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 a touching subject. It's because um, with with the evidence that um, has uh, evidence. That has come to light in 2020, Kushoka, Mr. Marawa, um, <clears throat> is that the process that was taken to 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 finish the the, the match fixing scandal, you know, um, it was unfair. It was a bit biased. And uh, it didn't sit well with a lot of guys that were charged. Um, these sub, um, <clears throat> these um, these charges meant Bukuti, um, I was to I was to be subjected to a disciplinary uh, hearing um, by e Cricket South Africa. Uh, it was obviously going to be presided by um, who the retired uh, judge um, <clears throat> Bernard Wape and um, <clears throat> who, 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 yeah, it was it was going to be presided by who, Mr. Uh, judge Wape and the initiator um, in, or the investigator was who, Mr. David Becker of uh, Becker and Associates, um, a law firm operating in South Africa. So obviously when, when something like this happens, you know, uh, when you are charged or when they find something wrong that you've done, as, 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 a, as a member of I ISACA, you know, um, a trade union, which is bargaining partner of CSA, I was to be represented by SACA, you know, uh, in the proceedings. But in all, in all, in all, um, in all honesty, I never saw who judge Guam. We are younger. All the th all the meetings with my lawyers and 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 um, the law firm that was um, obviously taking on the matter. I think we only met with David Becker, Louis Cole. You know, uh, we've I've, I've never sat with with Judge Wabe eye to eye, and <clears throat> you know. It's 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 very unfortunate that the way that it was handled it was very unprofessional. 
Um, the reason why I say that is because we felt targeted. Now, in my own opinion, the reason why I feel like we felt targeted is because the petition we wrote in 2015, I think that was the reason we were targeted. Because most of the players that were heading the petition was myself, Tommy, Pangi, which is not implicated in the match fixing uh, scandal. Um, Tommy who? Uh, so he said it was you, Tommy? Who? Tommy Tolegile. Tolegile, yes. And who? Yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, so I was, I was <clears throat> at the time, I think I was. Um, I was I was I was sitting with then the sports minister called Mr. Balola, when he was questioning a lot about indoor year year, year, year match fixing, and he gave Mr. Logan a call to say, Chief, what's going on? You know, uh, these players have written a petition to you guys. Why are the players feeling like this? And his response was, his heart is bleeding of what he's hearing, you know. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just hoping Oguti, um, Mr. Mbalula can also confirm what I'm saying because I was with him, you know. And <clears throat> it's, it's, you know. I'm sorry, Lolo. I didn't hear what the response was. His heart is his heart is bleeding. Oh, that that's to, now Logat. Who, who's his the, heart is his heart. Mr. Logat's heart is bleeding. Of that's what, what he said to we you, as, or that's what he said to the minister in your presence. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm. What did you, well, you personally understand him to be saying when he, he said that? To be honest, Chair, um, it, it's for me, I think it would mean that um, if his heart is bleeding, he wasn't expecting it from, from us because he thinks that we, we might have been treated um, fairly, we might have been given equal opportunities to be playing within the structures of the Proteus team. You know, so he was disappointed in us to, to, to write something like that. You know, mm. um, I don't know if you guys have the, uh, the petition in front of you. Is it part of your paper? It should be part of my um, affidavit. But obviously, that's 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 not something that we're going to go to into now because we are busy with the with the match fixing scandal. No, I was just see, wanting to see whether we have the petition itself. As part of the papers, eh? Were you going to talk to it if we had? Were Were you going to talk to the petition if we had it? Because I could ask Advocate Nelly to go print it quickly. No, 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 no. Um, I was not going to talk to it. It, it was okay. just. It was just a point of reference, Uma, uh, the petition we wrote, the reason why we were targeted. Okay. You know, so I was not going to talk to it. So, as I've stated in my, um, uh, in, my, in, my, in my statement, in my affidavit, 
Mr. Becker was also the lawyer of Saka and has acted for them in many legal matters involving CSA. You know, um, Osaka appointed Mervyn uh, Tabak's um, attorneys uh, to act as my um, to act as my uh, uh, legal uh, representatives in the matter of the, the match fixing. So I told them, Oguti, guys, I don't want your lawyers. You know, um, I'll get my own lawyers. You know, because of all the incidences that have happened in the past. So at the moment, I didn't want nothing to do with Cricket South Africa and Saka, you know. And then I got my own, um, I got my own lawyers. And um, my lawyers at that time, when we started the thing, it was uh, TGR attorneys. Um, their offices are in um, in Santon. Um, so they indicated to me that I should use uh, TGR services. If I use TGR services, I'm going to need to pay for my own lawyers. So they were not going to pay anything towards my law, uh, my lawyer's fees. But the evidence that came to light recently was that Saka actually paid for Alvio Peterson's um, lawyers. We don't know how much they paid, but the fact remains is they paid. And there was no reason given to me, Uguti, why are they not going to pay for my lawyers? Who was Peterson represented by? Do you know who the lawyers were who represented Peterson? Those no, lawyers who got paid. Lawyer, uh, Come again? I think it was a personal lawyer. It wasn't uh, Saka's lawyers. Okay. Yes. Um, Um, like, like I stated, uh, years after, which is like recently, um, that's when we heard Oguti, uh, lawyers got out there were paid by, by Saka. And um, I, 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 I took the gamble, you know. Um, I paid the guys out of my own pocket, uh, TGR, and um, I, was, I, was, I was really excited to, to, to have a, a professional team um, that would have my interest, you know, at heart, um, to 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 um, to fully uh, protect me in the hearing before o, o, the retired judge, o, Judge Wab. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, um, I ran out of funds, and um, I could not um, continue to use their services, you know, because. I think that was also a tactic of <clears throat> CSA to try and drag the matter so that we are exhausted financially, you know, because CSA obviously is a big institution where they do have funds to go for years, you know. So um, um, there, were, there, were, there were some disturbing features, man, of the investigation. Um, which 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 transpired to the withdrawal of the services of UTGR. You know, um, I was intimidated by Mr. David Berker, uh, threatened with criminal sanction and the laying of criminal charges in respect of the matter which had nothing, which had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with match fixing investigation. Now, if we go to, if we go to page 12 of the match fixing scandal, the one that says, Dear Lonoabo, So this message is the message that was from TGR. 
that was supposed to be relayed to me from Berg, Becker and Associates. Now, I'll read this. <clears throat> Dear Lonoabo, as you've likely already heard, CSA had a media briefing this morning where they announced a, the ban of four additional players, including Tami Tolekile. These players all entered into sanction agreements with CSA. I've attached some of the new some of the news articles. David Becker called me earlier and requested that I relay the following to you. That CSA will be charging you next week in the event that you don't charge, you don't change your mind and decide to cooperate with the investigation. Now, this one is alarming. That CSA would look at a life ban as well as a fine against you for them to incur the cost of prostituting the matter. That Louis Cole would be seeing the NPA on Monday who will be taking CSA's lead on who to charge criminally for corrupt activities. The intimation being that if you don't cooperate, you may be arrested and charged. You know, and, and, and funny enough is that after Alviro spoke yesterday, after Alviro spoke yesterday, there was a article, a News 24 article that I saw this morning. And if you can allow me to just uh, go through it and just show you the, tell you, read the, 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 the heading. Ex Protea Alviro Peterson cries foul over match fixing probe. Investigator rubbishes, quote, nonsense claims. So it seems as if that's what they always do to try and keep us quiet. Because here we're not talking about the match fixing itself. We are speaking about the processes that were taken to, to sort of us sign the sanction agreements. Now, for me, it, it, the, the, the email continues to read that Tami has admitted guilt and will testify against you in any proceedings before the tribunal. Tami has agreed to a 12 year ban from cricket. Now, it goes on to say, that CSA has found evidence in your WhatsApp messages of your involvement in an insurance scam relating to watches and evidence of you having monies which were likely never reported to SARS as income. The intimation being that if you don't cooperate, CSA may refer this to the SAPS and SARS and as the case may be, you know, uh, that you would likely be the only player who hasn't admitted guilt. This is obviously a critical moment in the case, particularly as Tommy has, tent, has, has turned. You need to reconsider your options and advise us what you wish to do. So those were the type of threats that were made to us, you know, what was troubling about this email was Mr. Becker's uh, investigating methods and the length at which CSA was, pre was, 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 was prepared to coerce me into signing a sanction agreement. The investigation that was conducted by Mr. Becker it wasn't a criminal one. However, I was threatened with a criminal sanction should I not cooperate. Further, I was threatened, further I was threatened with paying for the legal cost occasioned by Cricket South Africa. 
It's their own investigation, but I'm threatened to pay for them. So I think the copy of the email you guys should have as um, LT3. Yep, we do, yeah, have. we do have. Okay. Um, and then, but obviously, my lawyers were shocked, you know, um, because it was it was the intimidation tactics. Oh, it was it 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 was just it was it was sad, man. It was sad, and then. If we go to um, if we go to LT LT four, yeah, you've got LT four. Yep. Yeah. The the tactics that they used. Dear Lonwabo, following my mail below, which relays what Becca told you, Becca appears to be overstepping the mark. So now these are my lawyers telling me that this is not right. Becca appears to be overstepping the mark as to what is ethical and lawful by making the veiled threats he has regarding the criminal charges and reports to SARS. This could be construed as an attempt to extort a sanction agreement out of you. We will need to carefully consider how we react to this, but it may prove useful in defending the matter in future. Please appreciate that in putting this to you, we are merely relaying the investigator's offer as we are required to do as your attorneys. Now this this email is this email is is it's it's self-explanatory. I could not do justice to it in attempting to explain the same. You know, uh, so I could I could I could I couldn't raise funds to 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 pay the services offered to me by TGR, and then they withdrew. I approached Saka to ask them to assist me. And <laughs> they refused and insisted that I should go to Tabax, Tabax attorneys. I, I, in my honest opinion and in my honest view, I did not believe that Tabax would represent me, like they would competently represent me and fairly, you know, it, it, I had observed that most of the players, because I was still in talks with them, they were represented by the same Tabax. It, it, it was my personal observation. Um, after that, you know, I decided, you know what, there's no point of me staying in, in, in Johannesburg paying rent. Let me rather pack my things, sorry, pack my things, put them in the storage, drive back to Port Elizabeth, now for Kadeha. Um, now you could you could understand how frustrating it was and how draining it was because I needed someone to 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 protect me, but I had no one. So I went came back to PE, spoke to my mom about it. We went to a uh, company called. Um, 
uh, Dijos Incorporated. Uh, the owner of the company is Danny Hos. Um, I, I, I spoke to Danny and we had an SC, may his soul rest in peace, just heard that yesterday that he passed away, uh, Mr. T um, Terry Price. You know, uh, the same, the same thing happened to, to Donny Hose. You know, uh, they executed their long-standing threats of the criminal case by opening criminal case during the disciplinary uh, investigation process. The case number, it was criminal investigation, no CAS 272 forward slash 06 forward slash 2016, Cricket South Africa, Cricket SA. You know, as soon as you see that, you, you just feel, you just feel, you just feel powerless. You, 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 like, you feel powerless and you feel, you feel defeated, you know. Uh, I, 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 there were times where I would want to sign the agreement, but then again think, no, man, you know what? Let, 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 let me put, let me, let me push one more time, you know, and see. Hence, they were saying that they're charging me because I was not cooperating. So that means I should have just said to them, okay, guys, I'm taking the sanction agreement. Let me sign. I think you have the sanction agreement as LT5 in the, in the affidavit. That sanction agreement is only signed by me. It doesn't have the signature of the CEO. We don't have the copy of that sanction agreement signed by the CEO and me. Mm. It just shows how Cricket South Africa show, it, it, it shows how Cricket South Africa is so mighty. It's, 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 it's a huge organization and how, and how insignificant ours, you know, now, I will leave this to the ombuds and the South African public to judge for themselves as to whether I received justice and fairness in, in, in the procedures and the methods employed by Cricket South Africa during the match fixing investigation. The urge Excuse me, have you ever had an explanation as to why Mr. Logger didn't sign this, uh, this no, sanction never. agreement. Never. I've, 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 I've literally requested for my full file from Donny Hose, the guys that were representing me. And, see, and it's, it's been about four years now since. It's five years now. Since, yes. Yeah. And, and I went to Donnie's office yesterday, asked him for the file because I wanted to have the file with me. And he said, I must come pick it up on Monday. And he said to me, Lonuabo, if you want us to come testify, we can gladly do that for you. Now, on the, the SJN started on the 5th of uh, July, right? It was on a Monday. I get a call from my ex-lawyer, Tia. He's asking me, Lopsu, what's going on? I said to him, the social uh, justice and nation building has started. Sort of like a truth commission kind of thing. He was like, yes, 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 but 
why is David Becker texting me? And I asked him, why is he texting you all of a sudden when the SJN has started? I asked him, what is he saying? He told me that he says that they should meet up so that they could see what to do going into the SJN. Now, it's, it's, it's a pity that the voice note that I have on my phone, you won't, you won't hear it, but I'll try and, 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 and play the voice note so that you guys can hear. Or I can send it that you guys can listen to it. Yeah, well, you can try what you want to try but uh, we will also request you to send that voice note to to us okay. yes now definitely do that mr chair but you can try now and see okay i'll i'll, I'll, I'll try and it now I'm not aware of any scenario to respect the. Uh, I understand. I understand what you say. Yes. Um, uh, like I said, all the correspondence that he has sent me, I said to him, listen, uh, I, I don't want to uh, communicate anything like this. I'm not aware of any scenarios in respect of that. And when the correct uh, um, entities contact me, then I'll deal with that. But uh, it's not a. I'm not going to correspond with him or deal with any submissions on the merits of the matter. I did tell him that last year, August already, and now again in respect of that. So you see, it's the second time he's calling my lawyer. Your lawyer? TGR. No, no, no. It was d -Hose. Okay, all right. Yeah, it was d -Hose. So why is he keep on calling my lawyer? You know, so it's 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 the urgency and the speed by Becker's uh, Becker, Becker attorneys to 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 try and conclude plea agreements and unwillingness to proceed to the disciplinary hearings and challenge the veracity of the allegations. It 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 leaves so much to be desired. You know, it's it's. It, 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 it left no option for a person like me to, 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 to turn into a platform like this. For, to put it to you guys to say, is this fair? Is this how, uh, like I'm not a law expert, but you guys would know that it's right or wrong. But I'm not looking for the answer now, Mr. Chair. It's, it's, it's just that I'm imposing that question to you guys. Yeah. Now, um, um, Now, in, 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 in my thinking, right, if the chairperson of the, of the uh, Judge Nguape, if Judge Nguape was not involved in the conclusion of these agreements, I think that had he been made aware of the above discussed tactics employed by Cricket South Africa, and Mr. Becker, he may have done something because he's a well-respected judge. He knows the tactics, you know, at, at, at paragraph 30,
sorry, Chair. Paragraph 30 of my signed statement. I stated that there's inconsistency in the application of the rules by Cricket South Africa. A case in point that Alvira touched on yesterday of Vaughan van Yasfeld. Seems to me that there was differentiation in who was investigated and who was not. There is disc discrepancy between his version and Saka's version around what we what he knew about match fixing allegations. On the 8th of August 2020, this is what he said to the Times Live interview. At Africa, I think Alvaro mentioned this yesterday as well. At the Africa Cup T20 game in Poch, Gulam approached me on Saturday morning. I met him that night, played on Sunday, and drove back on the bus from where I called Saka and spoke to Andrew Britsky. If I recall correctly, if I recall correctly, Andrew Briscoe of Saka said in the interview on SABC that Vaughan called Saka via telephone in the morning. Now, it's for someone to know of such information. Someone to know, as it's, it's the anti-corruption official at Cricket South Africa knew about the situation. They did nothing for it for three months, did nothing about it. Was it a tactic to, 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 to try and lure black African cricketers, because I can assure you now, at that time, I was giving headaches to the selectors of play, for playing. Alvira was scoring runs for the Lions. They were sidelining him. Tommy was the best wicket keeper. He was making runs. He was a threat. If he was performing and he couldn't get selected for the SAA side, is it a coincidence that all the four black players that are currently doing well are all involved in match fixing? Mm. Um, like, by uh, plea, uh, by plea, to the current management and board of cricket South Africa. You know, is it possible this case to be reopened? I know it might, it might, it 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 might uh, be uh, might be expensive, but is it possible for that to happen? I've already served my four or five years of my eight year ban. It, it's reopening the case will not prejudice anyone. You know, uh, like if only things can be done the same way that it's done to our colleagues, our white colleagues, if I can put it that way. You know, so in that regard, with the match fixing scandal, that's that's where I think I would end off. You know, if there's any questions that you um, uh, 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 the chair would like to ask or. Uh, Advocate for me, sir, or, or Mr. July would like to ask. Please, please feel free to ask. 
Mr. Sosobe, it seemed like you were charged on the, in April 2017. Others were charged in December 2016, or somewhere in 2016. Why were you charged later than other people? To be quite honest, I don't know. I had to go to but I had to get someone to intervene because this thing was, it was a cloud on top of me. It was a dark cloud on top of me. From earning a lot of money monthly to earning nothing, to earning nothing, I drove back home. Uh, depression, depression. I, <laughs> these guys don't understand what they do to us. I suggest that we just take another five minutes for you to, to recover. We will adjourn for five minutes.
Are you okay now to proceed? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. It's all right. It happens to all of us, certainly to me. <laughs> um, I will. Ju I just have to remind you that you are still under oath, Mr. July. Uh, or, or you, you, you were still proceeding. Just finish off the part okay. that you were wanting me to, to to talk about. And, yeah. Before. No. Um, what I wanted to say, when I'm Mr. Chair, is that um, <clears throat> you know these guys don't understand the 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 situations and. Is you know that they put through us, you know, um, they take it for granted that I've lost my livelihood, I've lost everything, you know. If at one stage I was, I was like, I was so depressed that. I thought to myself, why should I be in this world? Because I've got nothing. If it wasn't for my mom, we would have been talking to somebody else. But yeah. Now, you then sign the agreement the sanction agreement. When you signed it, were you still represented? <clears throat> when, I was, when I signed the agreement, um, yes, I, I was represented by uh, Dijos and um, Terry Price, the Dijos uh, Incorporated. Mm. Did they express their views to you about this agreement? Yeah, well, the way um, Mr. Price put it to me was that, um, you know, if I if if I let this thing carry on, you know, um, they were thinking of giving me a life ban. So I'd rather take the eight years. You know, so for me, it only made sense that, you know what, just take the eight years, dog. It's eight years is going to go quick. You know, but I, I had no other option because of all the of all the threats, of all the intimidation that was that was thrown our way, knowing very well that these guys don't have financial capacity. They don't have people to fight for them. Who at who at Saka was insisting that um, the this firm? He said it was. He said what was the name of the firm that was um, that was imposed the tab tabax? Eh? Yeah, who at Saka was insisting on that firm? Because obviously we were dealing with um, with David Becker, so it was it was uh, his uh, communication between um, between uh, my lawyers and and uh, and him. Well, they they told they told me that they've got a, a, a company, a law firm that can assist me in this. You insisted that they they pay for your own independent law firm, being TGR. There is what was their main response for not um, allowing you to have your own law firm of your choice? I was not given. I was not given. I was not given. Um, I was not given an answer. I was not. Nothing was explained to me that this is the main reason why we are not paying for your lawyer. The LT4, 
the email. In fact, that email is incorporated in your product, in your affidavit. So we can just go to to the affidavit itself because it's incorporated there on page 13 of your affidavit. Um, Go to paragraph 27. Yeah. Go to paragraph 27 of your affidavit. Yes, so what I did was um, <clears throat> in the ELT is okay, I put aside, you know, so that I can, I can go. No, you don't have to go to the LT. Just go to your affidavit. Oh, okay. Paragraph? Yeah. Paragraph 27. 27. My then attorney TGR. Yes, that's where LT4 is. Yes. Your attorney says the following to you. Following my email below, which relays what Becker told me, and the below in this paragraph is what is above, right? Yes. The, the email that you quoted above. Yes, the, 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 the email yes. that I, I read yes. on. Then it says, Becker appears to be overstepping the mark as to what is ethical and lawful. By making the veiled threats he has regarding the criminal charges and reports to SARS, this could be construed as an attempt to extort a sanction agreement out of you. We will need to carefully consider how we react to this, but it may prove useful in defending the matter in future. What was he saying? Did you ask him what does he mean when he say to defend the matter, the matter in future? And also what did he mean when he says he was acting, overstepping the mark as to what is ethical well, and lawful? Well, um, to be honest, uh, Mr. Tulai, um, you know, like I said earlier on, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a law expert, you know. Um, thinking that the advice that I'm getting from the people that are supposed to be uh, protecting my interests, you know, it's, it's, it's best for them to, to deal with the matter. You understand? So, so I didn't... I didn't, um, the overstepping part um, is the fact that they went through my phone and um, uh, threatening me about things that are on my private property and say that they will use it to, uh, to, to go to SARS or to go to, uh, to the police or whoever to disclose that I got money. Ooh. Threats by Mr. David Becker. In paragraph 25, you, you state that um, you wish to highlight some disturbing features of the investigation, which transpired prior to the withdrawal of the services by TGR. I was intimidated by Mr. David Becker, threatened with criminal sanction and the laying of criminal charges in respect of um, the matter, which had nothing of, of a matter which had nothing to do with the match fixing investigation. When you received these threats, as you uh, directed uh, some of the threats to us, you know, via the emails, did you bring it to the attention of Judge Ngwepe or CSA or, you know, who, who did you um, speak to about these threats? Like I said before, I've never spoken to Judge Ngwepe. Never. I've never seen Judge Ngwepe. But I think at the time when Utabang Moro was the CEO, I called Tabang and asked him, Aibo, Tabang, is this matter still on? Why are we being charged criminally? When we were told that if we sign the sanction agreement, we won't be charged criminally. And Tabang said to me, this was his response. Lofsi, I don't know. 
I don't know anything about this matter. And your attempt Did they ever escalate to to anyone else? Like some of the threads, some of the threads were they ever escalated? I don't think they did. <clears throat> Mr. Totobi. Yes, sir. You, you've just said that you were told that the, there will be no criminal matter opened against you if you signed the sanction agreement. Yes. And you signed that sanction agreement in July 2017. Mm -hmm. I want you to turn to page 15. Page 15 of your affidavit. Yes, page 15. Yeah, it would seem what you were told then is not consistent with what is contained in page 15. In particular, the very first that paragraph starts on page 14. It ends on page 15. But I'm interested on what is on page 15. After, after TGR. Yes, or... it says the case was opened under the following case number, criminal investigation. But if you look at the date, I'm not a criminal lawyer, but this seems to indicate the file number, which is 272, Slash 06, I would imagine the 06 would stand for a month. A month, yes. Slash 2016. Were you told that this criminal case was already opened against you? Or you were told that there will be no criminal case open against you? I was told that there won't be any criminal case open should mm. we sign the sanction agreements. Mm. So that just proves that I don't think anyone at Cricket South Africa knew about this whole thing, except for Mr. Harun Logat and uh, the back of her. And why no wood? No wood is in PE, right? I don't. I don't want to lie. I don't know. I'd be. I'd be lying if. I say to you that um, I know. There is a no wood here. There is a no here as well. I'm not sure. Do, do you know of any no wood in PE? No wood. Um, Sherwood that I know in oh. PE. Okay. Okay. So your signing of the sanction agreement, from what you are telling us, was is because we're also told that there won't be criminal matter opened against you. That's correct. Mm. Okay. So yeah, those, those are the questions from your side. Can I? Is it? Is it? Uh, through you, Chair, uh, is it possible to to just read you the uh, the email that I got from um, SAPS? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why? Uh, the email was dated um, Friday, tenth July, twenty twenty, at eleven forty eight. Twenty twenty. Yes, 2020, 1148. Now, um, it's from Engelbert M., Lieutenant Colonel. Criminal investigation, Norwood CAS 272-06-2016 slash slash Cricket South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, 
this particular um, email was addressed to Mr. Van Skalkweg, which is my um, DHO's uh, incorporated lawyer, right? Good day, Mr. Van Skalkweg. I am Lieutenant Colonel Mariska Engelbrecht. Attached, attached to the Serious Corruption Offences section of the Hawks. I am also involved in the investigation of the above mentioned matter and a colleague of Colonel Duploy, who had previously engaged with you regarding the above mentioned matter. It is my understanding from Colonel Duploy that you informed him in March 2020 that you will no longer act on behalf of Mr. Totsobe and that you had advised him to obtain legal representation. I have been, I have been unsuccessful in, main, in making contact with Mr. Totsobe as he does not respond to any telephones, to any telephone calls or any email messages. And therefore, I kindly request any contact details you might still have for him. Your assistance in this matter will highly be appreciated. These guys have never called me. When these southern, oh, yes. yes, they've never called me. They've never sent me an email. The one oh, yeah. time they sent, the one time they sent me an email, it was this uh, uh, deploy colonel deploy guy, who said the same thing that they can't reach me. Before that, were you ever contacted about this matter? Before that, 2020? It was the deploy matter. It was the deploy um, guy. As, as you can hear, he says that he's, she, is the, she is the colleague of Colonel Duploy, yes. who had previously engaged with you regarding the above mentioned matter. Okay. So when? my lawyer went, sent a response to them to say that what is the matter? If you've got any evidence, bring it forward mm. so that we can properly um, uh, uh, represent. represent our client. Mm. We didn't get evidence. We didn't get anything. Same as to the Becker situation. My lawyer asked them to give us the proof or to give us the evidence they've got towards me. We never got anything. We were promised that we'll go to a tribunal. We never went to the tribunal. Mm. Mm. So between the time of the letter that is written by the 2020, how much time has lapsed between the time when Duploy wrote to your lawyers and the 2020, what the point that I'm trying to arrive at, what triggered the writing of that letter in 2020? Um, okay. They, they, sent, they sent the same letter and just changed names to Tami Tolekile on Tuesday, February 11, 2020. What, what, what triggered the, 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 the writing of the letter? I, I don't want to lie, I, I don't know. Or it must have been because we were going to go to uh, Robert Marawa's uh, sports show and talk When were you at Marawa's sports show? Um, I'm not quite sure about that, but I can try and find out for you. Okay. And how would, if you could summarize for us, um, Mr. Harun Logat's role during this match fixing scandal? So, so what was his role? Did you ever interact with him? 
you know, can you just maybe explain that to us? I've never, never interacted with Mr. Logan. I've never interacted with Judge Mwabe. The people that we were talking to is the Beckers, uh, Beckers and Associates. I've never, ever, never. So I don't know what role as the CEO and it says that. Even the president, Chris Nedda, I don't know what was his role as well. Because I'm assuming if there's a case, there's a CSA case, right? The board members of CSA should know what's going on. Why were they kept in the dark? So then who did you request um, the final copy of the sanction agreement to, like the, you know, like the signed, a, a copy that's signed by both parties? Who are you making that request to? I was making that request to my ex-lawyers. So it was Daniel House Incorporated. Because obviously I was not going to call um, David Becker to say to him that, listen, I need the sanction agreement signed both by Harun Logan and by me. You know, uh, it was my lawyer's duties to do that. Mm. And, and to this day, you've never received a copy that's signed by both parties. Thank you. Um, Lonavo, I, <clears throat> I think we, we have heard you, um, and before we, we adjourn these proceedings, is there anything that you yourself would like either to say or to request from us? as this panel charged with this duty of determining what is contained in the terms of reference, which I will not refer to uh, for the moment. Well, um, Mr. Chair, what, 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 you know, just, just as sign um, or as something we can also uh, look into that you guys, uh, because in terms of discrimination, you know, and in terms of uh, unfairness, um, to draw up or ask CS, uh, CSA to give you guys the distributions that were done by SACA. You know, compare my distributions with a Mone Moko because he was a bowler, I was a bowler, you know. Uh, the contracts that we had, my last contract, I think it was close to 740,000. Compare that to Mone Moko's contract and see the differences that uh, Dr. Eugenia was talking about. You know, and like, like, like I say, I've, I've, I've lost livelihood. And there's reputational damage that was done by Cricket South Africa, you know? So could have been playing IPL, could have been playing CPL, could have been playing Big Bash, you know, uh, sponsors. Uh, so there's a lot that they don't, well, I'm not gonna say they don't understand, they are fully aware of that. And I think it's also a point that our viewer made yesterday that it's, it's malicious. They're doing it on purpose. 
because they know if they close the tabs when it comes to finances, you've got nowhere to go. You've got nothing to do. You can't do anything. You know, so my 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 plea to 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 uh, cricket South Africa. You know, with all the experience that all the people that have spoken, I'm not only talking now about myself. You know, all the people that have spoken, the experiences that they have. I still have a dream to 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 have a academy in the Eastern Cape and look after the kids that are still growing, the kids that still want to make it and play for the Proteus. There's nothing like that in PE. And I'm willingly putting myself to the plate to say, guys, give me the structure like this. Mr. Jordan spoke about structures. You know, where do they build the structures? Far away from our black people to to, to, to actually play the sport, you know? So if we've got the experience and the expertise, why not build such structures and put us back into those structures to say, guys, look after these guys. We will feed from you. You get us players, we'll make sure that they make it to the top. Do you understand? It's It's... It's things that they know, but the question is, are they willing to change? That's the question. Are they willing to change? They might, they might be sitting and watching, but it will always remain. The ombuds can do the recommendations, send it to them, but are they willing? How willing are they? To change. You know, funny, just to show you, I'm just going to go back a little, Mr. Chair, if you may allow me. It's okay. There were times where we would come from tours, right? Most of the players, if we were coming from India, coming to South Africa, most of the players will get off at the Maldives to go spend time. I didn't have money to get off at the Maldives to go spend time, like to, to say uh, I need so many years to, uh, for tax purposes. What does that show you? Same fields, same everything, but I can't afford to go to the Maldives. As I understand, and these are these romantic islands where very people. Romantic, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mm. Very, very romantic. Mm. And and the same the same gatekeepers. If you look at it, the, the same gatekeepers that are doing these kind of things to our black African or black people in South Africa. Look at the IPL. How many black African players have played in the IPL in the past couple of years, let alone now, because there's quite a lot now. It was only Makaya, no other black guy. Now, the same coaches that were coaching here were coaches in, 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 in the IPL. You know, compare the, 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 the exit of our legend Uput Makai. Compare the, ex the, the, the exit to a Mark Boucher, to a Jack Callis. You know, obviously we, we all know that Ujak is, a, is an exceptional player. He's like one of the best, you know. But was Makai given the same opportunity that they've given Jock? Can you comment about what your views are about the fact that at one stage Makaya went to coach in what in Zimbabwe, Zambia? In Zimbabwe. Yes. That 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 personally that speaks a lot. 
a person that has fought and represented South Africa for 13 years to go coach in Zimbabwe because he doesn't have a coaching opportunity in South Africa. Yet, the same people that he played with today are the coaches of South Africa. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. I think he I think he had a couple of wickets to go past the legendary Sean Pollock. His career was cut short to make sure that he doesn't go past him. You were you about the fact that it appears that most or almost all of the black cricket players in this time period, which is our mandate period, cannot be called to be all-rounders in any sense. It seems that most of the black, especially the Africans, players have been bowlers. Uh, and we haven't got, say, for like Ubavuma, mm. um, many African cricket players who are batsmen. We seem to have excellent expressed in bowling. Um, I say nothing about all rounders. Um, do you have a view as to why this is so? My personal view in that, um, I, I, I think you asked that uh, yesterday as well with Elviro. Yeah. Um, my personal view, it, it, it boils down to the same question. You know, when a coach gives you um, credit, that you know what, Lenovo, you can still you can hold the bat. You know, that's that's an ego boost for you to hold the bat. Are the opportunities for you to bat enough? Do you get enough opportunities to become a batsman? Is there someone dedicated for you? to become not just a bowler, to become a batsman. You understand? But so, be, sorry, what's that? You can be both. You can be both a good batsman and a both. good You can bowler. be both a batsman and a bowler. There's nothing wrong with that. Wayne Parnell was a batsman and a bowler, but was did they drill Wayne Parnell hard enough to become good in both of them? It goes back to opportunities. Why give more time and opportunity to the white guys and not the black guys? It doesn't make sense. Are we being put in the team? You, you know, I always say, I've been called a quota, 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 all my cricketing life, you know. But a quota that became number one in the world. What does that tell you? That Abadabam Nyama are not just in the sport because of their color. They're actually good at what they do. Kakiso Rabada, Temba Bavuma, Aaron Pangiso was good, Monda Zondeki was good. There's a, there's a lot of black African players I can call under the good within the structures, but where they afforded opportunity. Because I might have one bad match, the following match I'm not playing. 
I might have one good match, the following match I'll still not play. You get someone who doesn't perform in three matches, but he plays the whole uh, the whole um, you know, series. He plays the whole series. Why are the white guys being defended? Sadly enough, the people that are sitting in board meetings, the people that are sitting in in selection panels, it's our own people. It's our own people. Our own people are suppressing us. Well, well, on that inquiring note, why, why? I think we, we are in a position to call it a day to go and puzzle over the questions that you are putting to us because we have a duty to attempt to find answers or to recommend at the very, very least what we consider are answers. Or if we can't provide answers as a panel to ask those who are in the levers of power isn't this an anomaly? And if it is, then what is the remedy? Because there needs to be a remedy. And in fact, those are some of the items or the objectives that are in the terms of reference for this project. And one hopes that everybody, at the end of the day, will rise to the occasion. Because the moment is now. If in the last 30 years nothing has happened, the moment is now. Otherwise, There will be those who feel that the gods are against them. And in a post-apartheid democratic South Africa, founded on the values of a constitution that talks about equality, human dignity, and all related values, I have no doubt in my mind that inequalities of the nature, that you have taken an oath to speak the truth, the whole truth and nothing else but the truth, to talk about those do not belong to a dispensation such as ours. And I'm sure everybody should welcome or would welcome the opportunity to come and give their views, just like you have ventured to come and give your views on both sides of the divide. And I would only hope that even those who have been mentioned and even those who have not just been mentioned but have been implicated will come and say, no, 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 no. So uh, Tsobe didn't get it quite right. What he perceives to have been an unfairness meted against him actually was not because of A, B, C, D, and E. And it is only because that will be the approach by everybody in dealing with these issues that have been raised in the past few days and in the two weeks that we have been dealing with this matter. 
is only when everybody says, no, 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 I've got something to contribute. Let's be open, let's be transparent, which is the same thing as being open, but let us know that there is accountability that comes with what we do. And that is why we don't take for granted people like you who say, I have no income as I speak, but I do appreciate why this platform is an important platform. And I'm prepared to come and say my piece in the hope that everyone who has got the interest of this sporting coat at that will come. And at the end of it, will be part of the solution and not be part of the problem. We live in hope and people like you who are prepared to come forward, come what may thereafter, assist us in getting closer to establishing what the causes are and thereafter providing solutions because solutions we must find. So I can't thank you enough for having availed yourself of this opportunity to come and dialogue with us and the country in an attempt to have some lasting solutions to clearly issues that are causing concern, not only with the players, but also with those who are in management, but also in the country. I get the sense that people are following these proceedings in much the same way as I have now got the sense that even people like you know what was said by the professor, by other players, and all of that. This is something that justifies our efforts to have these hearings in public. People must hear what the pain was in much the same way as they must hear what will be the explanation by those who have been mentioned and or implicated, because then they will have an all-round picture of what the solution should be. So that is, in a very long way, a way of saying thank you very much. This project will be better for it, for the input that you have given to it. And on that note, we'll adjourn. Um, at 9 o'clock on Monday, I believe we will be we will be dealing with what is in our program, but uh, you are <laughs> you are excused. But uh, if uh, you want to watch the proceedings, <laughs> then you will, <laughs> because I believe that you guys <laughs> are watching what the proceedings are say uh, are about and what comes out of the proceedings. I'll, 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 I'll watch, I'll watch the last day, sir. <laughs> oh well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we, I, um, I thank you guys for once again uh, for opening up the, the this kind of a platform. And uh, <clears throat> like you say, I just wish um everyone can just come together, you know, because uh, our cricket is 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 in a bad state. Um, not only the players are suffering. Um, our reputation is going down. So if we can't come together, um, then I don't know what.
but thank you very much to you guys as well for listening. You're welcome. We will adjourn today till 9 o'clock on Monday. Thanks very much.